Welcome to the Tales of Aeoth, a tabletop podcast set in the world where magic and modernity clash in the age of steam and metal. Six players, as a colorful cast of characters, explore the nations of Aeoth and discover the marvelous wonders as well as the ever-increasing dangers. With an unknown threat looming over the horizon, will our heroes be able to save the world? To find out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you give us a like and comment down below, that would be great too. This video will be a session zero, a one-shot of sorts, where the individual party members go through their own origin stories before they are called by the Emperor on a grand adventure to save the nations of the Empire and the world as a whole. Welcome everybody, my name is Yaktan, and I am accompanied by Emerald, our editor, and also a player in today's one shot, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Emerald, I'm playing Reyna, a half-elf bard of the Valor College, and she wants to be just like their parents, and she is also obsessed with all legendary heroes from the last season of the game. A young elven child born into a noble family, the symbol of the kabui embroidered in their robe. Leftovers of the previous empire, she was trained by her father, a warrior poet, and mother, a powerful elven mage. Destined to live up to the standard of the Empyrean heroes of their past, they idolized. But what happens if you are denied your destiny? Or rather, in a way you least expect. In the middle ring, the second ring district was home to the lesser nobility classes, poets, artists, merchants, and warriors made families and clans to consolidate power under the emperor's rule. These lesser nobles would manage trade and culture internally within the empire, being trained in the Empyrean arts of how to play music, paint and embroider, and of course, how to fight, making a strong class of commanders and generals from birth, learning from generations past. It sort of wists back to your childhood, as you see that you are a young Reyna in childhood robes with your father, Theon, having robes of white and gold with the Kabuye pendant draped around their neck. He sort of taps on the table and says, now then, tell me, what is the Empyrean? Empyrean mandate. Memories start to swirl as you recollect your earliest childhood memories, sitting in your house in the living room, attending a lecture by your father. Roll for a history check. Oh, I thought I had to memorize that for a second. Oh! oh! <laughs> okay, so you recite what the Empyrean mandate is almost by heart because your father has been like really drilling it into you since birth. What the Empyrean Mandate is, it's a collection of decrees written by the Empire's dynasty's past, upheld and maintained by the Emperor's rule. That list consists of a thousand and one orders from the heavens above. It is more than just rules and regulations, though. It consists of an example of how to live and achieving balance with the world around you. This mandate was appointed by heaven, emperors that were in charge of making sure that the mandate would survive, which meant that it needed to adapt and change. Nothing internal remains perfectly stagnant. Each emperor upheld and updated the mandate by adding new decrees to the list. The emperors could also add new decrees or addendums to the mandate, though they can't contradict previous decrees. That's what the mandates of heaven are. You got that? Yes, I got it. It's going to be on the test later, right? <laughs> Your father is testing you right now. Shit, right now? I'll... Theon is actually quite impressed by you. So impressed, in fact. I think we've done enough learning for the day. Run along now. Thank you, father. He says with a smile, allowing you to go to spend the rest of the day with your mother, who greets you with a tray of sugary desserts. Don't eat too much, or else it will spoil your supper. But dessert is part of dinner, so isn't that like having the best part before the veggies? <laughs> no, you're going to have to eat those as well. Dang it, I hate my vegetables! Not the veggies! Come along now. Yes, mother. Dinner blurs in a harmony of laughter as you remember the happy memories as you eat meals with your mother and father. Sometimes visitors would arrive, tell stories about the past, or gossip about the future, but it didn't have any effect on your child's mind. The only things that you were interested were the stories of Empyrean chivalry and the heroes of the past, the respected warriors of the Empire. Taking books and scrolls by the Empyrean Library, you read and study the stories of old, the legends of heroes that, with their courage, helped the Emperor create the Golden Age that you benefit from today. Reading deep into the night by gaslight as you were enamored by the words on the pages. And of course, you hear late night reading again. Did you think I couldn't see the light from the bottom of your door? But father, I was being so careful. Your reading was interrupted by your father, who was leaning by the door of your room, catching you in the act, chuckling as he begins to scoop you up, carrying you to your bed. How did you find out? I thought I put the lamp underneath the covers perfectly. Nope, can still see the light. Can I at least finish the story about the legendary hero Haka one more time? You know reading late at night is bad for your eyes. Plus, a noble lady like yourself should get some beauty sleep, or else you'll grow as ugly as your father. 
Oh, man. He says facetiously as he boops your nose, places the cover on top of you, and tucks you into bed. All right. How about a deal? I can tell you a story every night, and you go to bed on time. Seems fair? That's perfect. <sighs> Takes a seat down and is like, okay, how about a story of how our empire came to be? A long time ago, before humans or anything crawled on the earth, there were ancients that came from the sky, observed us as we scurried around the ground, taking pity on us when monstrous dragons slaughtered and subjugated us. Descending from their gold and steel thrones on chariots of fire, they cleansed the monsters from the face of ale, bringing peace and tranquility all over the world. One ancient came to the liberated mortals. He was similar to our golden champion, but was adorned in jade armor. We called him the Yuhong, the leader of leaders who lived up in heaven and commanded everything from the sky. He commanded a human to step forward from the many. One man approached him from the awestruck crowd. Following his order, he was given a scroll that flowed like silk, shined like silver, and embroidered in black ink from a dragon's heart. The ancient then spoke, written on this is the way to live in harmony with the universe. Learn it, embrace its teachings, and you will achieve enlightenment, earning your place in our jade palace in the sky. The man took it to heart, studying the scroll from end to end, and led a group to follow the ways of the ancients. That man was the first emperor, the Tianzi, the enlightened leader of Aeon. And his dynasty and the ascended dynasties afterward are all looking down on us in that jade palace in the sky, watching us further their legacy. The end. Whoa. Really good? <laughs> he finishes a small kiss placing on your forehead. No, you only get oh. one. Oh, Sweet. really? Sweet dreams, my little moon jade flower. Sweet dreams, father. Father. Another day of your memories comes into view. Just hear your father, Theon, going, come on, wake up, or else you're going to miss the good festival food. It's not even 9.30. Your eyes adjust to a memory of another day. Your favorite holiday, the Emperor's Military Parade, an annual festival to show the might of the Empire in the capital city. On this day, the legendary heroes brought the rightful Emperor to the throne. All of the soldiers' uniforms, new guns, new machinery, and of course, the main event, the legendary ancient, the Golden Champion, on the center float. You're gonna miss the parade! Get up! Up! Get! 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 Okay, I'm up. I'm getting ready. You already see that Theon has like a couple of mute skewers and other delicious festival foods just already in his hands. It's like, come on, come on. Yes, thank you, father. Father. What? I don't know. Should I call him daddy? <laughs> I mean, you can. Just don't make it weird. So as you can see, there's a military parade of soldiers driving cars as well as like other machines. Just imagine them like armored trucks, auto buses, things like that. And of course, soldiers like marching in lockstep, doing little like brandishes and whirls with like their rifles, provide a show for the crowd. So going outside, the sounds of cheering could be heard as you walk out onto the street. The air wafts of street food and ale as people went to the food carts to partake in the free food. You can see lines and lines of people blocking the path of view. That's when your father picks you up and lets you sit on his shoulder, allowing you to see the parade. Master Father, we gotta get the good spot to stand in. We don't want to get blocked like last year. <sighs> All right, hold on. Just like sort of <laughs> carrying you along. He's like, eh, 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 eh. there we go. Oh my gosh, you can see everything. You can see the new uniforms with accompanying masks, similar to the constables, new machines from an armored autobus truck, what appears to be an armored tank. Oh, this is so much different from last year. Yeah, can't wait to study it all for my job. Oh, thank God, it's not gonna be on my next test. He sort of jokes, you sort of know that your father is retired, in a sense. He doesn't really do any active military duty anymore. He just sort of teaches new recruits, including you and the neighborhood kids. He does other studies. He recites poetry. Of course, he knows a lot about history, which sort of gives you like your fascination of stories. He sort of imparted that onto you. As soon as the center of the parade approaches your street on the float, you don't see the golden champion of the empire. Only a mock-up made of metal. Where's the golden champion? Sorry, honey. Looks like he's not. Maybe um. he's uh, maybe he's busy? I'm sure he'll be back next year. This is like terrible. This is like going to the Christmas float parade and it's like, where's Santa Claus? Where's my Santa? Your first disappointment makes a mark in your childhood first of many. As the images started to blur, another day in your childhood. Yes, reality hits. The ultimate disappointment. Oh, there goes reality. Oh, there goes <laughs> gravity. Back to memories. Memories! On another childhood day, you hear Theon say, Again! Your father shouted, like a drill instructor. You were sparring in the garden with your neighborhood friend, Yang. A slightly overweight child with silver blonde hair with a black streak. 
He was constantly picked on for eating too much food. Still, you two would be as thick as thieves. Sometimes you get into too much trouble than your father cared to admit. Yang going, he's like, you ready to lose again? Not today, Yang. You now begin to spar with Yang. You don't have any armor. We have our pride. That is our armor. Yes, it's true. So it's just your dexterity. You both have wooden staffs. A staff is a simple weapon. You do have proficiency with it. Ha! Ah, sucks to suck, Yang. I have proficiency. Roll for initiative. I shall roll for initiative as well. I said five. Hey. I don't know what the fuck you got, but hopefully it's worse. Uh, well, you actually got the same. So. There we go. Children roll. I'm ready. Since I'm going first, let me roll this terrible strength roll here. Mm -hmm. That is a three. Yang, I don't have an insult for you, but I'm getting up in your grill. You have to hold it like father taught you. Two hands on the stick. So you do miss. It's now Yang's turn and he is going to attack you. Yeah, that definitely hits. Just do like a one-handed sweep with a 1d6. Roll for dexterity, please. Okay, that is not one. You know, my rolls are getting progressively worse over time. Okay, so he hits you in the chest, then immediately does like a one-handed swing just right on your ankles, forcing you to fall over. You just were not ready for that. Oh, come on, Yang, really? <laughs> Oh, that's it. You can either stay prone or you can get up. I'm going to get up. All right. Can I try to like sweep him off his feet? Uh, you definitely can. Either roll deception or sleight of hand. I'm going to roll sleight of hand because that's uh, some good stats right there. Yeah, go for it. That's a 17. Okay. Yang, you never saw it coming. You just sort of like sweep, hitting his ankle, causing him to like lose his balance somewhat. And then you get to bah, hit him in the chest, forcing him to fall over. That technically counts as your movement. You can use your action to essentially gain advantage. So you can just smack him. I'm gonna be like, eat shit, Yang. How does it feel to be swept off your feet? Well. All right, that hits. Roll for damage. Right. Four damage. Nice. Okay, it's his turn. He is going to get up, moving over to the side, and going to hit your back, catching you off guard. <laughs> oh dear. Oh yeah, no, that's a 20. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yep. Hey, Yang, all right, man. 11 damage total. Damn, Yang, really just coming at me today. Leon is just like, come on, you're going to let him do that? He's not fighting fair. There's no such thing as fair in a battlefield. But isn't there any honor? He cheated. He cheated. There is honor. However, he is not cheating. He is just using everything that is available for him. You can either think fast or get hit again. Is there dirt on the ground or is it just grass? It's grass, but if you do a sleight of hand check hard enough, you can put some dirt in his eye. Yeah, that's what I was thinking to be an ass. All right. Just put dirt in his eye. I'm going to put some dirt in your eye. That's 22. All right. Yeah, no, that succeeds. Use both hands to like sort of dig into the grass and immediately just like... <laughs> It was so fast that he couldn't even recognize it. He immediately got dirt in his eye, and that gives you an advantage to attack. If you're not gonna fight with any honor, then neither will I. He's still fighting with honor. He's like, I oh. know you're not supposed to use the ground. You use every single tool that's available to you. That's including the ground. See? The, the environment is as good as any equipment. Oh, Thank yes, you, you hit him. Gotta be careful of all your surroundings, Yang. Uh, uh, Yang is actually going to try and, since he has like dirt plastered into his eye by like your amazing swing, he's gonna try and get it off. He got a seven. That's not happening. So he is still partially blind. That gives him a disadvantage. So he's going Perfect. to try and attack you with a disadvantage. The first one is a five. Yippee. So yeah, no, he does not. <laughs> your turn again. Where'd all that confidence go, Yang? Ooh, tuck shit, get hit. Hit him. You still have advantage. 17. That works. It's a hit. Would you like to move it all or? Yeah, I am going to move to the other side of him to try to confuse him because he has dirt in his eye. So I'm going to move like right over here. Yang is going to try and get the dirt off and he actually succeeds. He's just like, what? Wait, where'd you go? That's for me to know and you to find out. Exactly, you best. You get advantage again because you are behind him. That hits. That's a oh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> let's go. With that, Yang is gonna turn around but use the momentum of pivoting to just do a fast and hard swing. He's going to attack, and yep, that hits. Dealing 1d6 damage. Ooh, it's really neck and neck here. <laughs> oh shit, really? Oh god, is it like a <laughs> one? Because I'm at a two. Oh no. All right, Raina, what are you gonna right. do? I am gonna try to circle around the other side because his back is exposed after he lunged at me. So I'm gonna go this way. Yep. Yeah, that hits. You don't even need to roll. Describe what you're gonna do. I'm hitting him in the back. You just immediately like just do a big old swing again. Would you like to say anything before you defeat him? Make sure to have your back protected. What? Then just poof, Just does like the Super Smash Brothers, like whenever you're about to do like a KO, just like 
KO. You hit with like the flat side of the pole where you hear like an audible like thwap. Oh no. You you went in a little bit extra hard as he falls over and face plants onto the dirt. That must have hurt. Yeah, no, that hurt a lot. Oops. You could actually see like a red welt on his back. Where... Oh no. Oof. I kind of feel bad now. I'll help him up, you know? I'll be the courteous one. After I smack someone, you gotta help him back up. After you win, you sort of, like, extend your hand out, but he is just crying. This is the ugly type of crying. I'm sorry, this... Yang. I didn't I didn't mean to hit you that hard. Theon just comes over and is like, I said, like, you know, give it your all. I wasn't expecting you to give it your all all. That was not specified. <laughs> <laughs> you did good, Rana. Well done. I'll take care of Yang. Thank you. I'll get him dessert or something. Go see how Yin and your mother are doing. All right, I'll go check in on them. So, as you know, obviously, since these are your childhood friends, Yang has a sister. Her name is Ye Yin, or Yin Ye. I swear I thought you said Yin Yang. Ah, You get it? it? See Yin and Yang! I feel clever. As you go over, you check on your other childhood friend, Yin. Yin is a more smaller, thinner girl with black hair with a silver streak, and she often wears glasses. You remember one time in your childhood, she confessed to a childhood crush on your father, always flustered when he entered the room. Your father, of course, would laugh it off, jokingly saying that he was already taken, letting her down easy. She soon grew out of it, obviously. During this time, she is studying with your mother for the new magic aptitude test. Failing at least two times already, it was a nervous wreck. When the test machine falters again, she begins to cry. Sorry, Matt. Of caboose, I can't do it. She also starts bawling her eyes out as your mother holds to console her. Roll a perception check. With a perception check of 12, as you see, like, your mother's hands, Kia Kaboos, reaching out, place her hand on Yin's shoulder to console her. In mid-action of that, you see that your mother's hands are shaking ever so slightly. Her hands are shaking? Is that normal? No, it is not normal. Is everything okay? I'm gonna walk over there. Hmm? Oh, uh, n- nothing to worry about, sweetie. Yin is just going a lot. Oh. Is there anything I can do to help? Uh, no, no. Maybe if you can help with your friend here. I'll go get some more sugary delight for both of you. Of course. Yang might need a couple extra sugary delights after I just kicked his butt. Roll insight real quick. So you saw that your mother just immediately deflected that question. You were asking about her, but she just immediately deflected it to Yin. Saying it's like, oh, Yin's just fine. She's just going through a lot. You don't know if she misunderstood your question or if she was purposely misleading you about it. I guess I'll ask when she comes back. Yeah, Yin is just still crying. He's like, eh, <laughs> I'll never be an arcanist mage and make armor for Lord Kaboos. Of course, this is during the time where she has like a crush on your father. Yin, you're gonna do great. You're gonna pass the test. It's just a one slip up. Roll for persuasion. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know. Uh, does Rhina have... Well, I think we all know who Rhina's like childhood crush is going to be. Oh, yeah. We know. Who the we know. Crush Come is on. We know. We know. Come on. That's a 17. Come on. I'm going to marry Korok. <laughs> yes. The emperor. <laughs> so... She stops crying now. She wasn't like ugly crying like Yang was, but you can see her glasses are like tears that wicked onto the glass and the frames of the glasses as she just sort of looks up and is like, you really think so? Yeah, you're going to be great. Come on, don't cry. If anyone could do it, it's you. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I failed the last two times. Yeah, but remember that cool thing you enchanted our sword? It exploded. That's pretty cool. <laughs> It went all over the house. It was awesome. Your, your father was really mad about it, though. We can always get another sword. <laughs> we can always just one. get another father. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, we can always just get another dad. Like, <laughs> oh those are God. a dime a dozen. Jeez. And, and remember when you made that, like, teacup float? That was awesome. Yeah, your, your mom and dad really were impressed by that. See? If my parents are impressed, that means you got some talent. With that... She sort of stops crying. And of course, your mother returns back in the sweets is like, don't worry about failing the test again. You can always take it again. See? There's no problem with it. As she's like carrying the tray, you, you hear like sort of the clanking of porcelain and steel because she she's bringing like sugary delights as well as tea because of course, everything goes good with chai as your mother is like sort of carrying it as her hands are shaking. Can I grab the tray carefully from her hands and just give her a quizzical look? Gr- grab! <laughs> Like, take it from her! You could just offer to, you know, take the tray. True. Mom, can I take the tray? Oh, no, no, it's, a, it's okay, darling. I, I, can, I can do it myself. Are you sure your hands are shaking? 
it's fine. It's fine. She just places the tray onto the table, and Yen just immediately starts eating the sugary delights. Yen's just not paying attention to this at all. Granted, she's a kid and just failed the test. I don't think she's gonna be, like, aware of anything. Yeah. Also, she's immediately flustered as Theon just walks in. Can I throw a treat at Yang? <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, go for it. <laughs> 10 o'clock. Yang immediately, like, opens his mouth, and it just goes right in. Nice. Is that the last thing you want to do? Yeah, because I don't think my mom's going to tell me what's wrong, right? She's just going to be like, You're Well, you can or... use a persuasion. Try and persuade okay. her. Mom, are you sure that everything's okay? With an eight. She's like, what do you mean, honey? Your hands have been shaking more and more often lately. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay, little Raina. I'm just, I'm tired. It's been a long day. Are you, are you sure? Yes, no, I'm, I'm sure if I just rest, I'll get my strength back. Okay, well, sugary treats are supposed to help, right? <laughs> Not everything can be solved with sugary treats, Raina. Really? Yes. That's, that sounds impossible. Yeah, unfortunately. Even though it's how me and your father have met, unfortunately, it can't solve every problem. Well, I'd say it can solve most problems. On that, we can agree. So you like a cheered up yin really quick. If I give Theon sugary treats, will he like me more? Kaya is just immediately just like, uh, sure. Doesn't exactly know how to process that one. Neither do I, kid. Neither do I. <laughs> That'll be the last thing as your memories start to blur again as you wake up to the present, a new day. Sayonara, baby Reina. On to post-puberty. <laughs> your day begins as you finish getting dressed for a full day outside. It was the beginning of the month of the vermilion bird, the time when summer dew proliferated the grass in the garden. During this time, your lessons have become more lax, giving you more free time to explore outside the confines of your home, as long as you make it to your father's mandated curfew. Of course. You can say goodbye to your mother and father before you depart. Your mother is in the living room. Your father is in his workstation. Where do you want to go? I am going to first say goodbye to my father. I'm going to stand outside the doorway here. Your father is in his own personal room, disassembling and reassembling a new rifle given to him from the Empire, which is strange since he is supposed to be retired. I'm going to knock on his door lightly. Knock, knock. Come in. Um, Dad, I'm, I'm heading out. Okay, don't stay out too late. I won't. You know I gotta get back for curfew. He sort of mutters to himself like, I'm fascinatingly designed by the engineering corps. These new automatic rifles are way more advanced than what I used to use. What is that? Oh, this is a, one of the new rifles that were made by the engineering corps. It uses an automatic receiver, which means it automatically loads in the bullet after when firing. How did they do that? Well, it's through a spring-loaded device in the receiver. You can see right here, the spring, it takes the ejected shell casing, throws it outside of the gun. A new bullet gets put into the action for recoil, so you can fire it again. Whoa. You can shoot, and then it just automatically reloads? Well, it automatically loads in a new bullet. You will have to reload the gun eventually. Oh, they couldn't have made it do both? Well, I think that might be a little bit too much to ask for the Engineering Corps right now. I'll uh, send that recommendation to them. Yeah, I'll write it down for you. Okay. Oh, uh, one more thing, Raina, dearest. If you're going outside, can you go shopping for groceries? Ask your mother if she needs anything. Will do. Uh, is there anything you need, Dad? No, just ask your mother. She already knows what I want. Okay, I'll be back. Take care of my little moon jade flower. Try not to get into any trouble, Dad. <laughs> I'm sure you won't. I'm sure I won't, but I'm not sure you will. Ah, uh, yes, I'm going to get into so much trouble while you're not here at home. Of course, yeah. I have you to thank for keeping me on the straight and narrow. Who knows what I could have done without you here? He chuckles, obviously being very facetious. Dad! You can tell where you inherited your wit. You got instructions to go to your mother. I'm gonna go on down the hallway and go to mom. So your mother is in the living room making tea. Her arms appear to visibly shake a bit when lifting her Esticon, the teacup. You don't even need to roll for it anymore. It's actually starting to become very visible. Mom, are you sure there isn't anything you can do for your hands? Uh, it's, I, it's okay, sweetie. I've been taking some salves. I'm just getting old. My bones ache a little bit, and, you know, that's just what happens when you get old, dear. I've been practicing some magic. Maybe that could help. I've already been seeing the apothecary. I appreciate it, but thank you. Okay. Well, tell the apothecary to do a better job. I'm sure they're doing the best that they can. All right. Oh, yeah, Dad wanted me to ask if you want anything from the grocery store. He already gave me a list. Oh, yeah. The essentials should be uh, enough, you know, meat, vegetables, for sabze polo, maybe something for meat skewers. Oh, uh, some more tea would be nice. Uh, here. She sort of, like, reaches, giving you, like, enough real Empyrean marks for the shopping trip. And, of course, a little bit extra to, you know, in case you want to do something else. 
Yes, thanks, Mom. Don't have too much fun, sweetie. What kind of fun would I not have without you and Dad around? She sort of smiles as, as she waves. I'm so, run out the door. going out the door, you can go explore the Empire in the exploration chart. You can explore the innermost parts of the Empire. The yeah. first district, the second district, and the third district. Okay. What are the districts again? The first ring district is, you know, where the Emperor is and all the higher nobles. Second ring district is where all of the artisans and middle nobles are. And third ring is where everyone else lives. This is where, okay. quote unquote, the common people usually are. You're able to easily take a trolley, which is called an orbital in the capital. They're called orbitals because they go around the rings in, well, an orbit. I'm kind of curious to go see the, um, the Emperor's District, the, right, the, first, the first ring district. You can roll for history, religion, or persuasion. I'm going to do history. That's a 12. All right. Mm, nope, not enough. At least I got some sightseeing. Yeah, you got to do some sightseeing. You went to the kebab shop that the Emperor really likes going to. Did I see the legendary Emperor? Nope. Unfortunately, he was not there. Aw, oh, man. Although they were selling the Emperor's legendary red ash kebab. Word has it that that is his favorite dish. I'm buying that. You want to buy red ash kebab? Well, if the legendary Emperor is eating it, right. you know I gotta eat it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's true. Red ash kebab, that is six gold. All right, I will buy one. All right, the serving thing is two. So the red ash kebab, it adds plus one to damage, relieves one level of exhaustion. So you can actually eat both of them. It's a serving size of two. I can eat one of them now and then save the other for later, right? Yes. You can either go back home or you can go to the third ring. Are my friends in the, the common area or are they just near my house? I haven't managed to see your friends for a bit. I wonder where they are. I haven't seen them in a while. That is a great question. Where are you? Where are you? I'm lonely. Where are you? I guess it's time to head home. Yep. And I'm so scared. Where are you? When you return home, you see that the streets are filled with soldiers. Uh-oh. Soldiers. <gasps> Hawkman. Yeah, Hawkman. That's my favorite Justice League character. The rifleman using trowels and shovels to repave the road. You remember your previous teachings that the Empire's military is required to do acts of community service as part of their training. To help the community and in turn foster trust in the Emperor's forces are there to protect their way of life. For riflemen, the popular community service is paving new roads. So much so that the trowel patches on their shoulders would represent them and the rifleman's slogan, pave the way, would be the battle cry during many practice drills. Having the rifleman here would be a good opportunity to talk to a senior officer for recruitment. A good way to retrieve your dreams of joining in the footsteps of your father and mother. Throughout many times you have tried to apply, the paperwork would mysteriously disappear. The recruitment clerk saying that your application just simply wasn't there. My application wasn't there? Yeah, no, the clerk was just like, ah, sorry, we don't have any papers for rifleman training on the name of Kabuzurina. Did father not think I'm ready? Papa? So, you can explore the streets to investigate the soldiers or go straight home. Choice is yours. I see soldiers that work for the legendary hero emperor, and I'm not gonna go say hi? That's true. Who would I be? Who would you be? When going over, two soldiers around here seem very familiar. No way. Yes, indeed. Is it gonna be my besties from it childhood? It is in fact your besties. The white and black hair giving it away. Looking so much different is your childhood friends, Yang and Yin, standing on the side taking a break from their shift. Yin, Yang! It's been a while! They sort of just like wave you over. Hey, how's it going? Look, it's Raina! Hey, it's been a while. Yeah, it's Yang, you grow a mustache? Yeah, I did. Got a nice Fu Manchu. Uh, yeah. Yin, you cut your hair? Yeah, no, it's a uh, standard issue, unfortunately. Adult Yin, young adult woman, with black hair and streaks of silver, a short pixie cut, more of a fuller face as she's gotten older. Yang, now a human man with silver blonde hair with streaks of black, fitter with a square jaw and a Fu Manchu mustache. It's been a while. You're looking great. How have you been? I've been doing good. I miss having you guys around. Where have you been? Oh, no, we've been, uh, did we forget to, to tell you? We sent a letter over to your house. We got accepted to the Rifleman Corps. Oh my god, no way! You're looking at Yin and Yang, fully graduated Rifleman, until we do community service. Then we'll be fully, uh, graduated Rifleman. That's awesome. You guys yeah. are living the dream. Check out, I grew out this Fu Manchu while I was training. I've been getting so many chicks with this. No way! You see Yin just sort of rolling her eyes. I'm just gonna get up close and personal to look at the mustache. Go ahead, feel free to touch it. It's all natural. 
all that around awkwardly don't. touches the mustache. You feel the mustache, the Fu Manchu. And it is silky smooth. If this was like waxed almost every day. He Dude. obviously takes a lot of care in maintaining his mustache. I have to agree. That is pretty awesome, man. I've been making so many ladies turn their heads. Yen is like, yeah, turn heads in disgust, maybe. Don't tell him that. Yen is like, Ugh. <laughs> Did you have a crush on Raina's father, Yen? And then Yen just kind of looks, again, looks a little flustered. It's like, I, yeah, I remember that you proposed to him one time in front of both Raina's mother and me. Also Raina herself. <clears throat> well, in, in my defense, your father is pretty handsome. I don't know what you see in him, but agree to disagree. <laughs> Look, it's been a long time, okay? Did we I not would... talk about that? Definitely been a long time. I'm just gonna give her a, a noogie. <laughs> <laughs> so how was trading? Is everything we've dreamed of? Oh, you would not believe it. The luck we had. We got grouped up in the same squad as the son of the legendary hero. And as soon as they start talking, you hear a voice behind them getting interrupted. Okay. All right. Break's over. Get back to work, you two. They salute and he's like, yes, sir, Mr. Legendary Ruffleman, sir. And then start running. They sort of say it just as they're like snickering to themselves. He just sort of turns around and looks at them and is like, I told you not to call me that. Legendary hero? They just immediately ran. They got orders from a quote unquote superior. Even though they're technically part of the same rank, they treat him as someone greater. So he just sort of leans back and starts lighting up a Kingsbury cigarette. Just sort of looking, he's like, uh, can I help you? Roll history, real quick. That's an eight. You sort of know that while the Silver Moons are sort of like a very all-inclusive tribe, them saying son of the legendary hero, you put two and two together and realize that this is Haka's son that you're talking to. Otherwise no known as Zakiba Silvermoon. No way. Yep, that is in fact the son of the legendary hero. <clears throat> uh, son of the legendary hero, sir. I was just talking to my friends, me and Yang over there. Uh, it's really cool to meet you. He just immediately like rolls his eyes. Okay, look, first off, please. It's just Sakiba, all right? Okay, just Sakiba. I walked right into that one. This is so cool. Takes a blow out of his cigarette. It's like, okay, so I'm assuming you know me because of my father, yada, yada. One, no, I'm not telling you where he lives. Two, I'm not tell him, yeah, you said hi or anything. He's just like going through like people have been asking him this over and over and over again. No, I don't know his autograph. I'm not going to learn it. Uh, one, that would be an evasion of privacy. Who? I wasn't expecting you to say that. But, I mean, obviously, that would be cool, but like that's also an evasion of privacy. And three, I didn't expect you to memorize his autograph either. Okay, so uh, what can I help you with? Leans back on the car while he's still smoking. Um, uh, I... He's just looking at you with like a face of really unamused and he was just hoping to just relax on his break until you just started fangirling all over the place. Not my fault. That is, that is a legendary hero, Haka. Yeah, it's true. Uh, write it in, right now. Write it in. Okay. Um, what's it like to be a rifleman? Because I am interested in being a rifleman. A lot of drills, waking up early, the food isn't really good, the pay also isn't really that good, but it is within the service of the Emperor. So that I will uh, graciously accept, just like my father before me, and just like his father before him. Do you guys still have any applications thrown around? Ah, you must have mistaken me for a rifleman barrack clerk, because I don't manage the papers. Uh, I wasn't asking for, like, paper reasons. I was just asking, like, any spots open that you know of. Uh, for land battalion? Probably not. We're all full. Unless, you know, you know how to cook? I dabble. My mom and my dad taught me a lot of stuff. You can talk to my captain. Maybe he can get you on for being the, the squadron's cook. I mean, mm. any way that I can help the emperor and his army, I'm there. <sighs> He just sort of like lets out a bit of a sigh. Just living your life is in service of the Emperor. It's not just about fighting. It's also about being happy, creating works of art, asking in the glory of the Golden Age. That's also making up to the, the might of the Emperor. He said it himself. Isn't it more exciting to go on adventures and see the world? I, uh, I don't... See the world? <laughs> we haven't even gotten out of the barracks yet. Yeah, but that's just a foot in the door. I suppose. Trust me, you're not going to be seeing any action anytime soon. It's just mostly drills. I mean, I wasn't expecting to see any action. I just want a ticket to go around, explore. The army can get you that. Well, we'll see about that. I mean, there's always the Navy, too. The Navy, huh? Yeah. Although, again, I have no expertise on that. I joined the Rifleman. Never really was much of a uh, boat guy. I got seasick quite a bit. Yeah, Dad's training definitely didn't cover that. Look, what's your name again? 
Reyna. Reyna, as he sort of leans down to give you some sort of an inspirational thing, whatever you do, I'm sure you're going to end up making a great name for yourself. That's the goal. I want to tell cool stories, mm-hmm. just like the other people before me. I'm sure you'll be able to have the option to do that. So can you please talk to somebody else? I need to finish my break. Oh, uh, nice to meet you, Zakiba. I'm just going to hold out my hand. He sort of like casually clasps your hand and sort of gives you a nice firm shake. Awesome. I'm going to give him my last snack and be like, hey, because you're on your break and I interrupted you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You help me out, I help you out. <laughs> he, he sort of looks confused. He's like, what exactly did I help out with? Information is key, my friend. Again, if you want to talk about joining the rifleman, ask my captain. Will do. Thanks. See you around if I make it in the rifleman. <laughs> okay. That was my last kebab. Just eat the kebab. The damn kebab. She's still like a bit confused as you sort of walk over to the captain. Oh, hello there, young girl. Are you seeing the best that the Empire can provide? I am Captain Tiai Feng Kong. A pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you, sir. What is your name, young one? My name is Raina. Raina, Raina, Raina. Ah, Raina the Caboose Housefolk. Yeah, my house is right there. I see. Your father is a great man. Yeah, he taught me everything I know. He's (laughs) awesome. Oh, I bet he has. We belonged in the same regiment, your father and I. Wait, really? Yes, we fought alongside each other. Do you have any embarrassing stories about my dad that I can make fun of him for it later? (laughs) Ah, well, I don't think your father would enjoy that, now would he? Come on. Looks with like a little bit of a, just with an eyebrow raise, is like, I would never want to tarnish such a good reputation that father has. I mean, he's my dad, so... You could try more persuasion. Okay, that is a 20. Oh, no! (laughs) Okay. You asked a bard to roll any charisma stat? Yeah, no, true. So he just sort of like pinches the underside of his beak like in contemplation. Hmm. Ah, I remember something. Uh, when me and your father used to sleep in the barracks, I would stir awake by uh, sounds of drills being done, and I remember he used to suck his thumb while he slept. Oh, this is good. I'm writing it down. It's apparently a nasty teething habit he got when he was a child. I wonder if he still does that. I'm definitely gonna find out. I'm so gonna ask mom. Sucks his thumb like a baby. Like a baby. I was also wondering, sir, um, is there any spots in the rifleman? Ah, now, do you mean, um, any active roles as a soldier or just simply for support? I either, sir. For my battalion, the land battalion, I believe we are all full. Memory serves me correctly that we needed a, um, cook and also a couple of hands for ferrying supplies to each regiment. Oh, yes, a new role has emerged since our training, since the Emperor rolled out his new doctrine. We needed someone called a runner. A runner? A runner is a person who runs back and forth, delivering messages to different squadrons of a battalion. How good are you at marathons? Uh, my dad's training regiment? I'd say pretty good. Well, if it's your father, then I have no doubt you will become a rifleman yourself once you send in the application papers. I remember sending him an application, but they said they didn't have it. Oh, how strange. Well, if you do send in another application, I am sure to put in a very good word. I will let you know, sir. It's very nice to see you, young Raina. It's very nice to meet you, sir. So you say that. When you start to walk back, however, something catches your eye. In the distance, a cloaked lizard folk is swarmed by children as they hold iced cream cones in their hand. Ice cream? Yep. Oh, wait, it's just a random dude just handing out ice cream? No, oh, yeah. That doesn't scream stranger danger to anyone else? No, apparently. Everyone else seems to be fine with it. Lizard folk is like, all right, all right, line up. There's plenty to go around. Form a line. They do that. They sort of lean over. All right, now, what do you have for me? They ask, leaning over the first child to whisper in their ear. Like, ah, fascinating. There you go, kid. Pleasure doing business with you. The kid grabs an ice cream. Thank you, ice cream lizard. All the children are sounding. is like, the ice cream lizard, the ice cream lizard is here. One by one, each children like goes over, whispers something into the lizard folk's ear, and then the lizard folk gives them ice cream. Huh. Trading information for food. That's actually really smart. Seems that the lizard folk treats ice cream for information. Purely a business transaction. Morally gray at best. You can go over and talk to this lizard folk if you want to. Uh, after like the last child sort of whispers something and then the lizard folk gives them an ice cream cone and then the child like sort of goes over and starts to eat. I'm gonna go talk to him then. How can I help you? Oh, wait, no. You're Theon's daughter, aren't you? Uh, Raina, was it? Yeah. Oh, good. My information is still accurate. I should hope so. I would be in big trouble if I didn't. It's my job to know everything. Seems like it. Smart kids. Well, yeah, they uh, never underestimate the power of children. They tend to know more than they know. 
They also can slip by pretty unknown. Yes, well, it's a, a simple business transaction. They tell me things that might interest me and I give them ice cream. She sort of has like one last ice cream, hands it to you and it's like, here. No information necessary? The first one is always free. Thank you. So now you have ice cream. Heck yeah. You have no idea who this person is. You know me, but I don't know you. I tend to like to keep it that way. Any um name that I could... It doesn't have to be a real one. Nickname? usually like to go with Y. The letter Y. Also, when people try to ask for me, people think it's a question, not a name. Pretty ingenious. They sort of sit on the side curb and like sort of pat adjacent to them for you to sit down. All right, let's go sit. Seems like you want to join the military. Yeah, big dream. And why is that? Meet the legendary heroes to uh, make my dad and mom proud and have an adventure and write some cool things along the way. So you want to know people, do you? Definitely. Well, me, I know people. I know a lot of people. Like the Empress Shabanu Kasana. She's like my best friend. So this lizard folk is claiming that they're the best friends with the Empress. She likes information then? Well, no, I like information. She is looking out for people with certain other skill sets. Kind of skill set. A little bit of uh, this and that. Maybe somebody who can uh, move up a crowd. Although, where can I find someone like that? You're staring right at her. Hmm, are you now? Well, I would think that you'd be joining the military, would you not? Your father is a famous warrior poet. You would think that you would be able to get the officer position so easily. Well, my application seems to mysteriously disappear every time I try to go for it. Hmm. Papers seem to mysteriously disappearing. Ah, interesting. Almost like someone wanted your papers to get lost. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? And why would you trust me about that? Because you're an information taker. Clearly know what you're doing. And how do you know that the information that I'm giving you right now is accurate? I don't, but at least it'll <laughs> give me a hint to know why. Don't trust everything that everyone tells you. That's also including me. That isn't that information 101? Smart girl. I like to think so. <laughs> you like to think so? If this unknown lizard folk is to be believed, they're simply taking information and reporting back to the emperor and empress. So they could be yeah. some sort of information broker. That is, if you choose to believe their entire story. I don't believe a word of it, but I know that they collect information. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll go talk to the empress, see if I can get an audience with you on your certain skill sets. Does that sound good? Yeah, thank you, Why? No, uh, no need to thank me. Just think of it as putting down my investments. I'd say I make a pretty good investment. Let's hope so. Well, run along home now. Thanks for the ice cream and the information. No problem. Casually skips home. No, I'm just kidding. La 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 la. I have an ice cream from the ice cream lizard. You return to the house. You slowly close the door as the wooden frame makes a soft creak. You can feel the glare of your father from across the room. You don't know why he's mad. It seems to be something that you did. Before you get mad, I came back on time before my curfew. You've been talking to the soldiers again, haven't you? Did you know Yin and Yang are part of the, the riflemen? Yes, I did. And I told them specifically not to tell you anything about it. Why not? Because I don't want you getting wrapped up in all of this. What? Why? We talked about this. You and your mother. Your mother just sort of like awkwardly just starts shuffling to go make tea. Your mother and I have been discussing about this and you are going to be taking lessons on your artisanship. You know that's not what I want to do. I know that's not what you want to do, Rhino, but it's, you're just going to have to do it, okay? But I want to be just like you. Rhino, there's more to life than just following my footsteps. But Dad, what was the point of everything we've done so far? Martial arts is supposed to give you clarity and focus. It is but one thing in your arsenal of different tools that you use in this world. I have explained this over and over again, Rhino. But I don't understand. If you didn't want me to do this, then why did you teach me? Then what's the point? Point is so that you learn a bit of everything. So you understand how this world works. And you are going to understand more of it when you go to the Empyrean Library and learn more and more from the Empyrean poets and philosophers. I don't want to be stuck behind books all day. You're not just going to be stuck behind books all day. You're going to learn how to play music. You might become like a good governor. You can serve the people and the emperor that way, can't you? There's more than one way to serve the emperor. Yes, there is. And that's why you should do it. What about traveling and adventure and everything that you got the chance to do? Raina, it, as your father, I'm telling you, you are going to finish your studies and you're not joining the military. That is final. Is that why my application keeps on getting denied? That, do not change the subject, young lady. But, it, clearly, this roll, is... Roll insight. Nine. You see your father just, his eye like somewhat twitches a bit as soon as you mentioned the papers mysteriously disappearing. It is, isn't it? 
I did not say anything of the sort. Your eye twitched. God. Are you seriously doing this right now? You told me to look around my surroundings. He's just like, ooh, okay. Oh yeah, okay. All right. That's it. You're grounded. I forbid you from going out outside unless it's for your studies. That is final. I'm grounded? Yes, you're grounded. Are you serious? Go to your room. I'm not a kid anymore. That doesn't matter. As long as you live in my house, you follow my rules. Now go to your room. Uh, now! Mom! She doesn't say anything. Are you seriously gonna let him do this? She just remained silent. Don't make this more upsetting for your mother than you has to. To your room, now! The only thing that's upsetting her is what you're saying. Do you want me to take away your pet, Skitter, as well? You said that was for responsibility. Room. Now. Whatever. Go to the room. Slams door. Slams like door. a traumatic teenager. Eh. Well, I mean, you are a teenager. So I know. So, roll a perception check. Come on, Perceptione. Ah! Oh, so 17. That, you hear, like, sort of sobbing. Obviously, it's from your mother, as she's a bit distraught from this. You see Theon is like, hey, hey, it's, it's all right. It's okay. It's better this way for Rhina. You know that. We both know that. It'll be tough on her, but, you know, it's... It's for the best. So with that insight, there's something they both know that you don't. What are they keeping from me? I don't know. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to go sweepies. Damn. Yeah. Remember, you're grounded. Grounded? There's no windows to escape. Nope. Plays My Chemical Romance goes in my bed. No, it's uh, My Alchemical Romance. I hated that joke in the first campaign. The next morning, you wake up, putting on your clothes from the wardrobe. Something felt off about this day. Like, you can feel something wrong. When starting to walk out to the door to try and get your application papers, you feel Theon's gaze like a sunbeam burning the back of your head. And where do you think you're going? I don't know. I'm grounded. Where do you think I'm going? An argument sparks again. The exact words you don't remember, but the anger was there. Out of the corner of your eye, you can see your mother, Kia, holding the family tea set like she usually does. But the cups start to jitter against the saucers. The next thing you hear is the sound of the shattering of porcelain as your mother collapses, laying on the floor. Mom! Your father quickly stops what he's doing and rushes to her side, quickly checking to see if she's still alive. Rhina, call the apothecary. Now! Okay, okay, I'll call. Runs dramatically. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Hello, apothecary! Elaine, is this you? The rest of the day is a blur. Your father taking your mother to the bedroom to rest. A half-elven woman that you recognize walks into the house, led by Theon, to check on your sick mother. You know her as Aline Silvermoon, wife of the legendary hero Haka, quickly walking to treat Kaya. And of course, using perception, you can hear the conversation that is going on in the master bedroom. Would you like to listen in? Yes. Eight. All right, luckily that is enough. You can hear like the muffled reverberations by like the bedroom door. It's like, isn't there something you can do? Anything. Money gonna be an issue. And Lean responds with like, that's appreciated. He's stable for now. Everything is normal, but these symptoms are unknown to me. I've never seen this type of sickness before. Beyond responding is like, there has to be something you can do. You healed the emperor in his time of need. Eileen just like sort of responding, I did, yes, but those were extraneous circumstances. Well, give her these herbs. Uh, they'll help with the pain. You can hear footsteps as someone is walking out of the room. I'm gonna pretend I'm just, I'm gonna call someone on the phone. Yep. There's a nice phone. And Eileen just starts walking out of the room, giving you a small smile and a wave before walking to the front door. Can I run after? Oh, yeah, totally. Aline. Hmm? Oh, uh, hello. You are uh, Theon's daughter, is that correct? Yeah. Hmm. He is a very kind and compassionate man. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's an asshole. He doesn't want me to pursue my dreams. He doesn't want me to pursue my dreams, stupid dad. How can I help you, little one? Is my mom going to be okay? Uh, yes, like I told your father. She's stable. Something uh, is causing her severe pain in all of her joints and her uh, limbs as well as her stomach and also her throat, uh, as well as some jaw pain uh, as well. These symptoms are just simply unknown to me. I will need to do some research. Perhaps something that the uh, Imperium Librarian can help me sort of illuminate on the subject. Did, did she faint because of me? She's sort of confused. She doesn't know what you're talking about. Did she faint because of stress? Um, stress could be a factor. Though I wouldn't rule it out, I think this is something that might, um, well, I don't want to alarm you, but this could be something that's genetic, something that she was already predisposed to, but I simply don't know. I'm making guesses. G genetic It's nothing to worry about. Like I said, I simply don't know. This is a new type of disease I've never encountered. She's gonna get better, right? 
As long as she keeps taking the medicine to soothe her pain, she should be fine. Although, she can't really walk around the house as much as she could before. So, you and your father are going to need to help her with it. I do everything for my mom. Of course. As a good daughter would. I already told your father about this, but I gave him the herbal medication for the pain relief. You need to seep it into her tea twice a day, and that should help with the symptoms. Does it make the tea taste bad? Because I don't know if she'll drink it otherwise. I'm sure you can add as much sugar as you need to. Perfect. If I told her what was exactly in the herb mixture, uh, she probably wouldn't be drinking. Definitely not. Mom's a sweet tooth. I see. Like I said, right now, all I can do is treat the symptoms. I can't treat the cause if I don't know what it is. So I'm sure your mother's sickness will be on my top priority. Thanks, Celine. No problem. Oh, your father actually mentioned something about you having an interest with my husband. You mean Legendary Hero Haka? Uh, yes, that's the one. Unless I married somebody else that is named Legendary Hero Haka. I don't know if he'd call himself that like every day, right? I tend to call him that every single day, yes. If there's a message that you'd like me to send to him, I will greatly uh, tell him. Wait, really? Of course. Oh my god, oh my god. Um, um, so many questions, so many questions. How did he get started? Oh, I already know that one. He used to be part of the Sentinel Watch of the old Dowager Empress's regime. Whoa. He was uh, he was sent over with a bounty to obtain Kora, or the Shabuzor, as you know, as our new emperor. And, well, I think you know the rest. Really? He was sent to find him? Yes. He was supposed to find him and arrest him, dead or alive. I believe that was the way that he said it. What? Yes. Oh, another thing. Haka actually showed his heroic feat of bravery when he fought off against a bunch of bandits in a caravan and saved my roaming apothecary from being destroyed. That's, That's how I met him, actually. That's so romantic. <laughs> yeah, it is. I still remember that day like if it was just yesterday. That's a pretty good story, though. First meet story. There's a lot of stories. Especially how we, um, consummated our marriage. I'll tell you that when you're older. Uh, I, I think that should stay between you and Mr. Legendary Hero Haka, ma'am. <laughs> oh, right. Of course. Anyway, she sort of blushes. She overshares a bit. Well, uh, <clears throat> is there anything else that you need? Um, well, is there anything you would like me to tell him on your behalf? Uh, yeah. What does he recommend training regimen to be just like him? Ah, okay. All right, I see. I will ask him that, and I will give you a response the next time he visits the city. Thanks, Aline. Gonna give her a hug. No problem. It is my pleasure. Now, get some rest, and you'll need all the strength to take care of your mother. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you. So she walks out of the room, giving you a small smile and a wave before walking to the front door. As she walks outside, you see the same lizard folk from earlier go over and give Aline a nod, which Aline does in return, and then the lizard folk immediately starts walking off. That's weird. Yeah, that is really weird. Aline, you sell our info online? You can also return to your parents' bedroom to see how they're holding up. As you peer over, you actually see your father crying inside the room, thinking that you can't hear him. Dad? Mom? He sort of like snivels in. He opens the doors. Come on in, sweetie. Trying like not to cry, to like put on a brave face for you, but obviously you can tell. Yeah. Dad? Mom? Don't speak so loudly. Your mother needs to rest. I'm sorry, I won't argue again. Yeah, and just sort of hugs you. You can see your mother starting to have streaks of white hair where black hair strands once were. Oh, it's not good. No, it's not good at all. Is mom going to be okay? I, yes, she's going to be okay. We were visited by one of the best apothecaries in all of the land. If she can't treat her, then no one can. We're in good hands. Are you sure? I'm sure. So the next thing you can do is just sort of rest for the next day. Am I allowed to like fall asleep in a chair in this room? Well, Theon leads you back to your room. I will keep first watch tonight. It's better you get a full night's rest. Get me a second shift. You'll have second and third shift. Promise? I promise. The next couple of days were depressing. Spending most of your days with your father to take care of Kaya while she withered inside the house. Her hair now turning a ghostly white, while her skin was sickly and pale. Oh my god. Yep, that's your mom. She's now wearing plain clothes, as she doesn't go outside much. Most of the neighbors have been, like, sending in gifts, sort of get well soon gifts, visiting her occasionally, like, to help out with housework or garden work, things like that. And, of course, Theon is looking. His eyes are, like, saggy. He's essentially working, doing twice the housework that he usually does now. You're doing some of the housework, but your father has been doing the majority of the housework. 
doesn't want to put it on you. He almost is like feeling guilt, almost like he's sort of like taking the responsibility for both you and your mother now. Dad, you don't have to work so hard. No, it's just, it's fine. I can, can you please give the tea over to your mother, please? Okay. Bring the tea over to your mother. She sits up on the couch, struggling to get up as if every part of her body hurts. Mom, you gotta drink your tea. Thank you so much. No problem. <coughs> Her voice is interrupted by coughing as she slowly sips the tea. Make sure to drink everything. Mm -hmm. Dad must have put in a lot of sweetener. In it's very good. Says like very meek, scratchy voice as she like tries to put up a bright smile, but you know that smile is hiding a lot of pain. My emotions. Emotional damage. Yeah, you're really going in for the the stabby stab there. You're you're gonna get better, mom. With you giving me my tea every morning and night, I'm feeling better already. Yeah, of course. Your father is, like, sifting through a couple of messages from the mailbox. His face, just sort of dour, like, sort of face, starts to slump even to, like, more of a frown. As he sort of, like, motions to you. Raina, honey, dearie, can you come over here real quick? Of course, Dad. But can we move over to somewhere that your mother can't hear? Of course. First, I wanted to say that I'm sorry that I was harsh to you for the past couple of days. I just wanted to do what was best for you. I mean, Mom's not feeling well, so... She was trying to hide this sort of ailment, and we thought that it was just like a couple of bones aching. I didn't know that it was going to get this serious. I'm sorry for withholding that. I should have told you. I get why you didn't, but next time I want to know. I know. I just wanted to do what's best for you and also this family. I acted too harshly, and I'm sorry for crushing your but I wanted you to grow and live a happy life. Something that really can't be done on a battlefield. I can't think about dreams right now, especially when mom's sick. You see in his hand that there's actually not necessarily a royal invite by the Emperor, but by the Rifleman Guard. What's that? It's a message from the Rifleman Barracks. I have been called into service again. You, you can't. I have to answer the call. I'm sorry. Nothing I can do. But mom's sick. What, what will happen if she gets worse? The neighbors will be here to take care of us. I hope that you will stay here and take care of your mother for me. You're a big girl now. You can do that. Aline will be visiting occasionally, and some of the people who work at the apothecary, so once they figure out what's wrong with her sickness, then we'll be able to treat it. We'll do anything to make sure that your mother feels better. What are we going to do without you, Dad? It's going to have to be strong for me, okay? I promise. He begins packing his things, heading to the front door, before giving you a soft smile. Be well, my moon jade flower, are the last words you remember as he leaves. Over the past five days, about a week, he never wrote back. Something uncharacteristic of your father to do as he tries to keep in contact with you as much as possible. That's weird. Yeah, that's really weird. Should I check the mailbox again? Where's that mail at? A couple of days later, you return back from the usual errands. The mailbox is empty, as if someone has already been through it. Coming inside, you see your mother sitting on the couch overlooking the window in the living room. Her hand has a gold and maroon piece of paper. You approach her as she starts to hand you the slip of parchment. Is that from father? No, you'll want to look. Maroon and gold are usually colors of royalty. This comes straight from the top, from the first district itself. It is none other than an invitation to seek an audience with the emperor himself. You see her, like, sort of handing the paper. I do not want to be the reason you stay here, your mother says. A young woman like yourself should experience adventure at least once in her life. Go. I promise, Dad. Now make a promise with me. Promise me that you'll take it. You promise it'll be okay? I will be fine. I promise. You'll send me letters? I will send letters. Why are you sitting here arguing? No. Follow your dream. Do you answer the call? Now you're just making me question my life's decisions here. Let's do this. All Take right. the call. But I won't let you down, Mom. That's impossible, sweetie. You are father's moon jade flower. You can't let him down. The feels. Do you go outside? I'm going out there. I'm going to give my mom a hug. And I'm going to go outside. All right. Handing you the thing. On it is the Imperian invitation to meet up with a civil enforcer, the Third Rings District train station. So those are the instructions on the letter. As you start to walk outside, you see a very familiar lizard folk at the front of your door. What are you doing here? Why? Well, I see you got my invitation. This now, was you? Well, it wasn't just me. Like I said, I put in a good word. Now you have a chance to meet the heroes that you always pined over. No need to thank me. Your timing sucks. Hmm. Apparently so. No time like the present, though. Isn't that what they say? They start to, like, walk, and it's like, Oh, uh, by the way, I stuck my neck out to convince the Empress to give you an invitation. So, no pressure. Don't mess it up. Wow, thanks. 
they start to say with a smile as, as the lizard folk walks off into the street, soon disappearing into the crowd. See you around, why? There was only one thing left to do. Rendezvous with new heroes and old and meet the Emperor of the Golden Age. And that's where we're gonna end it, folks.